Death's outbreak that spreads in fear Is all they can feel Coming in fear The dust withers away Emergency calls The static spreads and the sirens wail Lock our doors, board the windows shut Racing for the night in this horrifying rut Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a playthrough of Dawn of the Zeds. We're going to be doing the director's cut with some expansions. That means I'm going crazy and I'm probably going to mess it up, but it's going to be fun. All right. Now, uh, just to get started, I'm sure you saw uh, the intro. Uh, I hope you watched it. I appreciate it. But we are going to throw just about everything at this. When you do the director's cut, it's got almost everything in it but we also have some uh, like at least one i think it's one additional actual expansion that i'm using called rumors which i think is super cool um and we'll add an element to the game plus the game's hard enough as it is and the rumors things can give you some good stuff uh, i think it also gives you some bad stuff i don't know we'll find out but anyway i have completely set up the game um i have my uh, zed's cup right here and if you don't know um, Dawn of the Zeds was a game created by Victory Point Games, which was, I think at the time for me, is one of the best game studios ever. They were independent. They made these really thick laser cut counters. Uh, they tooled along and did some, some fantastic games. Um, uh, Darkest Night is one of my favorites of all time. There's Contagion. There's uh, so many different games that they made that I just love. The, the one with the Zulus, I can't remember the name of it, something with Zulus. Anyway, that's a fun game. It's in the same vein as this game. And they had this um, line of games that were like, like I want to say, encroaching like tower defense type games that were just so cool. And this is absolutely one of them. So um, we're going we're gonna to play it out, and you're going to get to see what the zombie apocalypse from the encroaching world is going to due to the small town of Farmingdale. Now, Farmingdale is the epicenter. It is, because there's a laboratory there that will allow us to research a super weapon to kill the Zeds. Now, the problem is, I randomly drew characters, and I thought I was going crazy, because I literally drew three of four characters. In fact, this one's not here. I've got to take this one off. Um, I swapped one out, because I, I was literally going to end up playing the exact same characters that I had in the last time I played three years ago. It was crazy. And I was drawing at random. So I did swap out one of them just to do it. I swapped out the assassin, um, uh, who is Alyssa Darling, I think her name is. She's really cool. But I did swap her out because it was becoming so... Like, I was like, I want to play something just a little different. And, you know. Anyway, I, I wanted to randomize it. So I ended up with some good characters, but it is um, they are similar. At least I'm familiar with them from the last time I played this. Um, I've already set up the event deck. You know, if anybody's played this game, you know that the hardest thing to do in the game is set up the event deck, and it's right there. So it'll be a lot of fun to see what happens because the event deck in the director's cut is stacked. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there are levels of the game. There's the basic game, and if you look in here in the level up rule book, there it takes you through various enhancements to the game because there's a lot to the game so it helps you build up slowly by the way if you can get this game get it it's awesome um so level one is called outbreak level two is called uh, outbreak with uh, some new rules <laughs> uh then there's the um actually level one the outbreak takes you through a lot of stuff level two is the apocalypse uh, uh level three is where you really start seeing some cool things called brains that's when it starts getting a little tougher then you got level four the walking zeds i was going to do the walking zeds but I decided to go straight to level five and do the director's cut. And we're set up for it. It does nothing in this, the gameplay fundamentally changes. It just adds more stuff and makes it more challenging for us. Like, well, even the ability to create the super weapon is something that 
you know, you wouldn't have had if you were playing one of the lower ones. I think in the last two you can do the super weapon. Also, the different sides of the boards matter. And this one has a track that's down here that's the tunnel track. And there are our toughest Z unit that I randomly drew for the start of the game is appearing in this tunnel track. The tunnel track leads through this laboratory. There's some cool stuff that, hap that can go on there. We got security already beefed up and ready to go. They're not beefed up, they're just there. We gotta try and support this because what's gonna happen in the game is, is the, there's gonna be a slow or sometimes not so slow march of the undead toward the town center. We have two ways that we can basically win the, the, the game and lots of ways to lose. The ways we win is we get all the way through the event deck and the National Guard comes to save us and we get to the end where we have an end card and try and survive that. It's, it's going to be tough considering that uh, you, you uh, have more difficult cards layered into the game as you progress through, up through the, to the director's cut. There's uh, green, yellow, uh, green, blue, yellow, and red. And red are obviously the worst ones, and we have reds in the deck. It's going to be rough. Plus, we have research we can do, and we have very limited turns because I'm playing effectively solo. Even though I have four characters, I'm playing solo, which means I only get one, one actual token for myself. The rest of them have to be through our uh, scene actions and uh, player actions, character actions that they have. So it's really a, an action economy game. It's very, very challenging. And I'm like, likely to lose, because there's another way to lose, which is through chaos. Whenever zombies, the Zeds, overtake a named location on the board, like, for example, down here, the Farmingdale University, the Chromotech uh, Technics Lab, then that will go into chaos. Now, we can clear the chaos and stabilize the region again, but to do so takes time and effort and also increases the chance of infection. However, um, if we get, if we lose, I think it's 12 markers in this game, if we get 12 chaos markers on the board, we are kaput, we are done, game over. Uh, in addition, uh, you know, we can lose characters, by the way. Uh, that doesn't stop us, we'll replace them if we lose them. But the other way to lose the game is by not, com you know, not being able to complete the end of the deck. Uh, and also, um, there's some other ways, I think if all our characters go down, we lose. I'm not sure, I'll have to remind, refresh my memory on that. But I'm sure you can tell me in the comments. Um, we don't have to build the super weapon to win. We just have to survive that event deck. The super weapon will help us win. I think it'll give it gives us a, an advantage to getting there. Plus, also we we can we have to manage supplies and ammunition and infection, which is a board that's way up here. And you can see in this board, we're gonna when we draw a card, it's gonna tell us what our actions are. It's going to tell us, now, I got very lucky on my rolls, by the way, I, and you can trust me, please just trust me, I rolled it fairly, but because of a character I have, I ended up with full 10 supplies and 7 ammunition. That is outstanding. Of course, the infection marker starts on 1, starts to march up, and during the phase, we have to roll to see if we have an outbreak, and outbreaks are, like, no good. So, um, hopefully we don't have too many of those, but like it says, like it says right here, we get infection by doing hand-to-hand -hand combat. We get two infection if, if the Zeds actually kill refugees, which are here right now. They are defiant. Oh, I'm missing a defiant marker. Got to get defiant marker on those guys right there. Um, they, uh, let me see, one, two, three. I have a couple without defiant marker. Oh, that's because I got them on the wrong thing. Okay, there we go. They should be on these guys here, on these refugees. Not on the refugees, but on the civilians. We have civilian units and refugees that are defiant right now. They don't believe that this zombie threat is real. So we can't, they won't move or do anything until they've encountered the undead. And then we can start to do something with them. That's, of course, except for these fine fellows in the town center. They're ready to go. They're being ordered by our characters. They know what's up. Uh, we also have, now I'm going to go over our characters real quick. And then I'm going to, but first I'm going to talk about some special units that we have on the board. Two of them are the security units for the labs. They're right here. They don't do anything special in particular. They're just good units. They, they're, they're good in, uh, they're tougher. It's a four and a three, which is pretty good. And you'll see, if you don't know the game, you'll see how combat works in the game. It's really cool. There's a little chart for both. Um, there's a, a player aid that shows how to do hand-to-hand -hand and gunfire. And basically, this is very old-style war gaming, but it's much more simplified. So you'll appreciate it when you see it. Now, I don't know how much gameplay we're going to get in this video because I have a few things to explain still. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about our characters. There's three, you can see three in the town, and there's one that's not in the town. I'm going to start with him first. 
because he's an expansion, an unusual character. He's also a rather difficult, more difficult one. His name is Big Wheels Carter. He's the king of the road. There's a backstory right there. You can pause it if you want to read it. But he drives an 18-wheeler, and he's going to give us, he's going to bring us stuff back and forth. It's his main job, aside from plowing through Zeds. So, on his abilities, he is the king of the road. Basically, um, he can, uh, he, he doesn't, never leaves his truck. He's never outside of his truck. Uh, and uh, he, uh, it says he cannot, uh, cannot voluntarily enter the tunnel track. It means he can never go in there because he's in an 18-wheeler, obviously, right? Uh, and he conducts gunfire attacks. It increases the infection rate during hand-to-hand -hand combat, nor can he uh, make arrests. So he can't do a lot of things. So it says he, the, only, the only attack he can do, actually, is this Zed's plow. It says, to attempt to move through a Zed-occupied space upon entering it um, on a 4, 5, or 6 on a die roll, you inflict one hit to each Zed in the space, and Carter continues on his movement. Carter stops... Um, Otherwise, Carter stops and conducts hand-to-hand -hand combat, but does not increase the infection rate. That means if he plows through them and he fails, he has to go into hand-to-hand -hand with them, and he's basically wheeling that truck around back and forth. But every time he goes to a start space, start spaces are at the end of each track. So I'll show you, like, right here, this is the forest track. That's the start space. Every time he gets back to a start space, he has this, this loaded and unloaded token. This represents... Uh, supplies and ammunition and so when he gets to town he gives us those supplies and ammunition empties the truck out and then he goes back down the road well maybe uh, you know it depends on it does require actions to get him to and fro and uh, he can be attacked right so we got to be careful of that uh, but remember uh, the, his Zed plow only comes into effect when he's moving through them not the other way around Anyway, he suffers six hits on his truck, and his truck will break down. We'll see how that works. We'll play that out as it goes, but that's a very unusual character. Big Wheels Carter. Really cool. Then we have some old standbys. I've played, literally played each one of these other characters. Carter was the one that I flipped out for one of the other players, the characters I've played before. We have the ever-reliable Deputy Schmidt. He's got a 4-2 a on his strength. You'll see how that plays out if you don't know. He's got a movement of 4. His abilities are initiative. He comes with this initiative token, and it's basically a player action just for him. So it says, once per action phase, he receives a character action to spend on his unit only. Place the initiative marker on the card to keep track of when you've used it. And when you use it, you spend it, and he can do stuff. He's got the ability of Eagle Scout. He receives a, a positive shift in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'll show you how that works when we do it. He's tough. Each time he takes a hit, he gets to roll a die. He might not take the hit. He's also got martial arts, and every hand-to-hand -hand combat, he's allowed a reroll. This guy's a, high, a brawler, even though he's got a pistol in his hand. Uh, he can also shoot. He's got a strength of four, and, he, and when he shoots, well, that really doesn't matter. It's it's what. Um, anyway, you'll see how you'll see how that all it works. It, it matters, but it, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat is the only way he loses this. Uh, and then he's got law enforcement, but that's only in a versus game, so we're done with that. That is Deputy Schmidt. Of course, again, he's got a backstory. I'll hold the card up for you. I'm not going to pause it or anything. I'll just you can pause it if you want to read his backstory. Okay. Next up, we have Mr. Johnson. Uh, here's Mr. Johnson's backstory. You can see down at the bottom it shows some things that happen. One of the reasons we have so many supplies and ammo is because of him. He enters the game giving us two more supplies and three ammo. So you can see he made a really big impact on the ammo, especially because we wouldn't have had that much. But now we're in good shape. Now he's Mr. Johnson's specialty is he's a scavenger. Doesn't mean he can't fight. You can see that they all have the ability to, to fight, but he's got this ability called stockpiles. When he enters play, he brings in two supplies and three ammos. That, that's why I'm so so good. He's also got scavenger. Instead of rolling one die, he rolls two when he's conducting forages. Forages means he's searching through the town or mines or other locations to get stuff for the community. He's also got heavy weapons. He's got a big shotgun. So when he uses his gunfire, it gives him a positive shift of two. Again, you'll see how that works when we go to combat. Uh, he's got practical medicine, a healer, amazing guy. As an action, perform a heal action on any unit adjacent to a space, including himself, at the cost of one supply. So on or adjacent. And then lastly, he can lay traps. When a Zed's unit or Zed's mob enters his space, he may roll a d6. On a one, two, or three, he conducts normal hand-to-hand -hand combat. On a four, five, or six, 
that Z unit or mob takes one hit and, and, and Johnson withdraws. It means he lays a trap and runs away. Now the reason they make that optional is you may not want to run away. Like he may want to defend the place, right? So it's optional that he does that because he could end up have, doing some damage but then running away. And with the three strength, he's not that bad. It depends on how big the unit is coming at him. It really does. Plus, if he's in a defensible location and gets a lot of shifts, he'll have a lot of advantages. Only poor rolling, which I'll do, uh, will affect him. And then we got Captain Piazza. There's her story. Okay. And she, she's mil in the military. She's a sniper. She's got a 3-2 strength. Her abilities are elite sniper. Piazza can make long-range gunfire attacks. Her gunfire strength is based on range. So she's actually best when they're two spaces away. She's taking pot shots at the Zeds. It gives her a, a strength of four in gun combat instead of three. But you can see um, if it's adjacent, uh, it's two. Three spaces, it's three. Two spaces, is four. So her sweet spot is two and three spaces. Uh, two is her best spot. So adjacent is only two. It means she's firing too close. Her strength is reduced. She also has Overwatch. After she makes a gunfire attack, she moves withdrawal. She can move one away for, from her, uh, her target by one space. Any player unit with her, except in the town center, because you, you have nowhere to go, uh, may be moved with her, including Defiant Civilians. So those Defiant Civilians, we can run up a track, pull some Defiant, defiant Civilians, not refugees, civilians, back with us. The yellow ones are refu refugees. The blue ones are civilians. Okay. Ammunition crafting. Piazza can make her own ammo and then shoot, spend two actions to make a gunfire attack using zero ammo. This may be done multiple times per combat phase, but it costs two actions, that's a lot. And then her military thing is for multiplayer, for playing multiplayer. Plus, we get help from the civilians. Not only do we get help from civilian troops or fighters that are out there, which are basically the people that take up arms, maybe have a baseball bat or a butcher knife or whatever, to help fight the undead. But we also have an official uh, group call. In this case, we there's a lot of them to choose from. I didn't choose. I did it randomly, and I didn't get my favorite or even close to it. What I got was WZED Farmingdale. They're heroic civilians. Radio station. Okay? You can see they're, they're weak. They only have a strength of one or one, but that's not where they come into play. And also, there's an ability there we don't even get to use because we don't have the, the other character that, that supports this. Which is okay. That's the way the ball bounces. But they do have some good abilities. They have this emergency broadcast system. Once per action phase, this unit may spend the emergency broadcast action to provide one free action to an above-ground regular civilian or refugee unit. Um, and that is a marker, like several of them. And basically, it's the same thing where you go boom to spent, and we use that marker. Okay, that's a pretty good ability because our civilians are also combatants and we need to get uh, refugees away and to the refugee camp. Uh, and I'll talk about what happens. We have something special in the refugee camp. I'll talk about that when it comes up. But I'll talk about it after we're done with our characters. Okay, uh, they have news talk. Uh, you may discard one hold for later fake card, which I may or may not have. It's, again, another cool thing about this game is you never know. There's so much stuff in the game you don't see it all through multiple playthroughs. Um, to negate a just drawn play card. Just drawn play card, uh, fake cards are usually pretty bad. You normally draw a fake card to determine a location of something happening. But then the fake card also has text. That text uh, will do something for you. It'll either give you an advantage or do something on the board to, to create some kind of chaos or something. Uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Okay, we interrupt this program as the one that I don't get, and that's unfortunate. So, um, we are not going to get that. And then coordinated defense. When players' units defend in a town or town center space, roll an extra die for hand-to-hand -hand combat and select the two highest values to determine combat results. So, basically, they're the radio station in town, and they give us... They can, and basically the way I look at that, that coordinated defense is that they're helping through the radio station, the radio, to coordinate where people are going and fighting in the town center. So they're cool, but there's a lot cooler ones in the game uh, that are uh, what they call heroic civilians. There's even some anti-hero civilians that you can play, but uh, we're not doing that. Okay, so one the one expansion I'm going to talk about is the Rumors expansion. I did put that in, and basically when one of these these civilians, when we flip them over and they're actually running away and they actually make it back to the if and when they make it back to the town center, they're going to go into the refugee camp. When they do that, we're going to put one of these, we're going to use a fake card to put one of these potentially out on the board 
and when we get to it, it's going to give us something cool, or maybe not. I don't, I don't know. I didn't look at them. I want to surprise myself because I've never, I've never played with that expansion before. There's another part of that expansion for railroads, but we have so much going on already, I, I didn't do it. Then the last thing that we have that's interesting in this part of the game is the um, DPC Commission, basically, which is the research. This card sets up the research discard pile, and this is how it's going to work, right? So uh, you can begin researching the cure for Zeds. The first thing we have to do is get somebody into the lab, then we read this little text, and then we roll a die. If we roll a three, just roll a three, four, five, or six, then we get to um, go on to the next early research. Sometimes they're going to cost uh, supplies or something else, usually supplies, to continue to advance our research, and that's what helps us. It, the, when we get into the late research cards, then we start getting advantages and benefits to help us against the Zeds. However, uh, it takes time, and it's, it's going to be really hard to do considering I didn't draw a character that has some kind of research ability. Though anybody can do it, there's just no enhancements to it. I also don't have any characters that can help in the hospital, but we do got... We do have Mr. Johnson and his ability to heal. Okay, what else can I tell you about the game? I think that's enough for right now. I think we can get started. There's tokens everywhere. There's stuff everywhere. I'm ready to go. I think we'll get started, and we're going to draw our very first event. We'll play that event out, and then we'll pause and go to the next episode. I think that's because I've talked quite a bit about the game. And you can tell probably... Um, by the excitement in my voice that I really like this game. I do. Here's all this extra stuff. We may or may not see any of this. There's how... Uh, I'll keep this one out because that's how villagers work. Um, and that's the refugees, basically. How civilians work. We'll keep that out. We'll keep the hero unit reference card out just because. And the rest of them are going to go up here. I'll put these in their own little pile in case we need to reference them. I may go through them one at a time as we play. But I've dallied enough and talked enough about the game. Let's get going. Okay, sequence of play. We're going to draw an event card. Then we're going to do this thing called the 4R phase. That means uh, R stands for Raiders, Refugees. Uh, I start losing track, but it becomes obvious. I don't remember what all. It's 4R, basically. Raiders, Refugees, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, re re realignment. I don't know. I'm kidding. Uh, it's basically four things are going to happen. We'll see how that happens. I'll look it up. I just don't remember exactly what it means, but it means that we're going to do stuff like, for example, I can, if I, on my 4R phase, if I have a 1, I can move a non-defiant refugee uh, space, uh, their movement. Okay, and then uh, we go to the infection phase. That's no fun. That's when we roll dice to see if we have infection. Uh, then we go to the eat phase, and the card shows us this in order, so it's very clear. Uh, then we go to Zed's phase, then the action phase, which is all of our heroes going and taking their actions, and then housekeeping is cleaning up. I have our event deck out. This is what's going to guide all of those phases. And we're ready to go. So let's draw our very first event card and see what it is. Hunting Lodge located. Okay, let's take a look at this in more detail. All right, so Hunting Lodge located. Okay, here, let me show you some things on the card. This shows the, the level of the card. That one blue means it's one of the lowest level ones. And it's a level one card, meaning it's one of the first ones we'll draw. Now, I could have some red ones in this that are one but red, which means they're going to be more challenging. We'll see how that plays out. So you can see the four, you can see the stages of the game I just referenced. You go across here. You see 4R is zero. That means we don't get any actions for refugees or raiders or anything like that. We have no infection. It's zero. We have to roll, um, we have to roll for uh, food. I'll do that in a second. Uh, yeah, then we have Zed's movement on these two tracks, and then we get a whopping three actions, and something else goes on here. We'll take a look at it and see what it is. So this is a great card, because in the eat phase, unless it tells us a number like this die roll means we're going to compare it to the number of people in the hospital that have been put in the hospital, because they have to, we have to give them extra supplies and feed them. Since we have zero, we can't roll le equal to or less than the number of people in the hospital. So that gets skipped. Now we move on to this part, which is going to be uh, the mountain track and the suburb suburbs track. Let's uh, move those, and I'll show you what happens. All right, now it's really simple. These guys are coming for us. There, there are more will spawn, but they're not going to spawn yet. And that's going to be it for the, the mountain track. You can see they're heading up toward these civilians that are currently at Lefty's Pass. Lefty's Pass is a defensible location. That's good. We might build a barricade there 
but I'd have to get a character there to do that. We'll see how this works. I think I can use the civilians to build a barricade. I'll have to refresh my memory on those rules. And then lastly, we have the suburb, suburbs track, which is right here. Ooh, they're already close. They can see these people at East, it's called East Irick. And uh, again, defensible location, that's good because we have a three strength unit there versus five, so they're gonna get an advantage. These guys can then run away. We probably gotta get a character down on this track pretty quickly because this track tends to get hairy fast. All right, that's all that happens right there. So now we're gonna go to there. We got three actions, and that means we get to put our action track up at three. Now that does not, we also have an additional action in our player action that we, uh, we have um, available to us. We also, remember, have the emergency broadcast system and uh, the initiative action for Deputy Schmidt. So that's uh, quite a few actions, but there's also something special on this card. And here's where this game just becomes such a storytelling event. You can see the, the zombies are trekking up the track. It's getting scary already. And by the way, we will be pushed back. It will get hairy. Um, and then it says, at the end of this phase, plus two ammo if, the player, if a player unit is in the campground uh, place goodies marker in the space as a reminder. So here's the goodies marker. We're going to place that in the campground. So if I get a character up there, they can get some extra ammo. Uh, we can actually handle two ammo. That would be great. That may be uh, the first thing we do with Mr. Johnson. That wouldn't be such a bad thing. So now that this card is virtually complete, we're going to then put it in the discard pile. And we are going to go to the next part of our phase, which is to take our actions. This is where the fun begins. So I'm going to move our action track down to two. And for our first action, I think since it's so obvious to do that, I am going to do this with, with uh, Mr. Johnson. He is going to take the action of moving. He's going to go one, two, three, and he'll go there and collect those goodies at the end of the phase, at the end of this, uh, at the end of the, um, this is at the end of the phase. So once we've completed everything, then we'll get to do that. That is pretty cool. All right, so he's there at the goodies marker. That'll give us plus two ammo. Ammo is precious, so that is a great, great thing. And that was the first of our actions. I think for the second action, I do want to get somebody down south to take care of those Zeds. I think for our second action, we might, we might actually move Captain Piazza down there to start to take uh, some actions. I still think, I think that the, up on the mountain track, if those Zeds do hit those civilians and the... Uh, the um, refugees, I think the civilians with their combat shift might be able to hold them back. Might not be. It might be a very bad day for them, but we'll see. And the other track, the, the suburbs track, that 5Z unit that's there, that's this one, 5 strength unit, is going up against a 3 that gets an, a bonus shift for being an East Iraq for defense. So that, that might be okay too, but nothing else has moved yet. So I think for our second action though, we're going to we're going to do something else. So for our second action of three, we're going to hear that rumbling of the 18-wheeler coming up the road. So uh, Big Wheels Carter has, I don't think I want to get all the way to town yet, but I do want to get behind enemy lines. He can run back out and run people over if we need to. And he will be doing a lot of that. But let's get him going. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's on his way up to uh, the town where he can drop off supplies. He won't do that this turn, but if we get the ability to use the supplies, then we'll be okay. Okay, next up. Now remember, since the civilians and the uh, refugees are defiant, I can't do anything. The only ones I can use are these ones, and I'm not going to worry about them right now. Um, they, are, they are okay. And so I think what we're going to do is we'll use our last action, and I am going to move Captain Piazza, I think, southward. She's going to go one. Let me make sure you can see all the things she's going to do. Two, three, four, and five. Look at that. If they stay there, they're at optimal range. If not, that's maybe I should leave her back one. No, we'll put her in the university. I actually wouldn't mind getting her up to East Iraq if, if they don't move and build a barricade. Actually, she'd just start shooting them from, from there, shooting that Z unit from there and kill it. It's not a very powerful Z unit, but if we can clear this up and give us a little breathing room, we can deal with the stuff that's going to happen elsewhere better. Like these Zeds, this nine strength Zeds that's coming up the tunnel track. But for the sake of discussion in the gameplay, one of the reasons I'm not super worried about the, one of the strongest normal Zed units in the game is because when they hit these catacomb areas, they have to make a roll because they could get lost in there. So that's not such a bad thing. Uh, we will never go down there like this. Chemo, chem, 
Chromo Technical Labs is going to get overrun because we're not going down there to defend it. We're going to stay back behind this. Like so, so, so these two are going to be in chaos eventually because we're going to stay back behind here in the security station and maybe block it from getting into town. I think that's better uh, long-term strategy. But we're not done yet. Okay, we got two things still to do. We have the, the Deputy, Deputy Schmidt's initiative, so we're going to play that. And I think I'm going to send Deputy Schmidt up the... Uh, he's going to leave the town center for a little bit and go help these guys here. He's got a movement of four, so he's going to go one, two, three, and four. Um, you notice I'm not even going at the laboratory right now. We're going to... Maybe I should. I could start getting things done in the laboratory with Schmidt. Just to get us started. I, he, there's Nothing's in jeopardy yet. I think that's a good idea. I'm just going to use that to move Deputy Schmidt up to there. Not such a bad thing. Okay. And then we still have the emergency broadcast. It says, well, you know, once per action, this unit may spend the emergency broadcast token action to provide one free action to any above ground regular civilians or regular units. Place the emergency broadcast marker on this card. So we have that. I do believe we're going to do that. I'm, the track I'm most worried about right now is this one over here, though. I do have... Yeah, maybe I'll wait on that. Do, does it? Where do they have to be? Do, okay, it doesn't say they have to be in the town. It just says above ground. So I can move them and then maybe move them somewhere else later. Maybe up here, because we have a hero going that way. We don't have one going this way. So they're going to start to make their way this very strong four-unit... A group of civilians. That means there's some, maybe some uh, athletes in there, some maybe some martial artists or some people who know are good with guns going up there. Who knows? But they're heading up toward uh, this place here, which is called St. Thomas, a little town that's going to get overrun on the way to uh, Farmingdale. Okay, that marks the end of I, I skipped the infection phase. That I think I told you because it doesn't really matter. Now we're going to go on to the Zeds phase and there, some things are going to happen. Duh, I don't know what I'm talking about. We already did the Zed's phase. They moved up the tracks. So that's all that's going to happen this turn. Oh, I still have my player action. I, didn't, I haven't used my player action yet. We do want to use the player action, don't we? I could. Yes, I... No. Yeah, let's do this. We're going to use the player... I have one player action. We're going to use it and get a combat popped off already this turn. How do you feel about that? Let's shoot something. That sounds like fun, right? Okay, we're going to use Captain Piazza, of course. From the highest point in Farmingdale University, she can see across the fields to this Z unit back there. And I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, so Captain Piazza, she has a range strength at that range of... Uh, now, I'm not going to use her special ability. I'm going to, I am going to spend an ammo, so we're going to go down to six, but we're going to get two at the end of this phase. And then uh, she is going to shoot her gun. Now, Elite Sniper, it's two spaces away. One, two, so that's going to be a strength of four. So we're going to roll on this chart, and it's just going to take damage. Now, there's no way for us to uh, get hurt or anything like that. So we're just going to roll and see what she gets. All right, uh, we're going to roll two dice. Here we go. Let's see what she pulls off. A six. It's not great, but it's going to be something. So um, that's not really that great. It might be... No, it's going to be... For four, she's going to do one. So basically what happens to this dead unit, just to show you up close, you can see there's two hearts on there and then a flip. So we have to do two hits, and then on the third hit, it'll flip over to a weaker side, two more hits, and then another hit, and it's dead. So we didn't do that, but we did put a hit on it. So she shoots her rifle. The Zeds hear it. They're meandering on forward. Um, and that was her attack and my player action. That actually is going to wrap up a full round of Dawn of the Zeds. How cool is this, right? <laughs> anyway, this, is, this game is so fun, and it is super fun to play solo. As you can see, there's a lot to it, but the way the game steps you up is brilliant. You can go from a very basic game where you're not doing half the things I'm going to end up doing in this, with, with, and you're only using characters that are not like these uh, more difficult characters to play. They're just the basic ones. You can do that, and you're going to have a blast. And if you go back far enough, you don't have to deal that much with even the civilians, and it's just pretty straightforward. Like if you start at the very beginning of the, the series. But like I said, I'm playing what they call the, du the director's cut, which means everything's in it and it's going to be wild and crazy. And I'm going to get some, I'm probably going to make some mistakes. We'll see. Uh, if I do, I apologize. But I think we're off to a good start. But before I do that, just before I wrap up, I do want to remember at the end of the phase, we do get to collect the goodies thing because I do have 
Mr. Johnson there, which is what it says it's going to give us two ammo. That's pretty good. That puts us back up to eight ammo for the, the, the game, which is great. Look at our track. It's so healthy. I'm not used to it being like this. I'm used to us fighting down here and trying to keep resources going. That will happen later on as we start to bleed out our resources and start to use uh, supplies for research and feeding people in the hospital and we're dumping ammunition to shoot massive Zed units. Like I, when these guys get to uh, get close enough, the this this unit needs to start popping them with uh, gunfire. Um, and any, by the way, any unit, even the civilian units, can shoot a gun. It's just some of them are better at it than others. And it's based on their strength and it's one, one space away. Like Piazza is the only one that can do this thing. Maybe not the only one, but the only one that can shoot it farther away, right? Captain Piazza. So anyway, that's it. I, I haven't even talked to you about Super Zeds. Oh my gosh, you're going to love this. Uh, at least I think so. Anyway, uh, and it also you can upgrade. The, oh, it's just crazy stuff. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. It's really important. Um, I'm trying to invest uh, more money and time in the channel. Not that I, I don't want money back. I just want you all to watch and have fun. So I'm trying to put more into the channel now that I've returned after a hiatus from bad things happening in life. And uh, we're back at it. So... Uh, please enjoy this uh, episode, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Take care, and have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you soon.